So come on in, come on, come on in and enjoy yourselves. It's, we're, we're, um, we don't have an audience yet, but it's being recorded, so people will be able to listen to it later. And um, I'm not sure if we'll have much of an audience today. I've advertised the hell out of it, but we we allow we uh, we put it on our website and we put it up. We you can continue to listen to it for 30 days on Twitter. Hmm. And it always sounds good. I never have to worry about that's the, the miracle of these machines, these phones. You can do professional stuff with this thing. It's incredible. <laughs> Used to be have need a studio and everything. Okay, so we'll start then. So I'm Yuri Cole from the Venice Institute of Contemporary Art, and you're listening to Art World Los Angeles with artist Stu Rappaport. Welcome, Stu. Welcome, thank and you. And curator Molly Barnes, who's, we're in her lovely home, surrounded <laughs> by amazing art. And we have Sung Hee Sung, mm -hmm. who's here with us. And um, we're here to talk uh, to Stuart about his work. Hey, Uggs, welcome to the space. I'm gonna make you a speaker for whenever you feel like it. But we'll have you, we'll invite you to speak um, later after we get to the the juice of the story. So the reason I asked Stuart to be on the show because I love his work and I've admired his work for many years. Um, he is a preeminent uh, Los Angeles artist whose work is in one of the more important books about Los Angeles art in terms of compendiums, and that's um, the one by uh, Lynn Keenholz. Um, LA Rising. Yeah, LA Rising. And um, <clears throat> We, um, we've shown his work at the Venice Institute of Contemporary Art quite a bit, and Ollie Barnes, who's next to us, has sh is showing his work at a show. So tell us about this upcoming show called Luck of the Draw. Sung he is, um, is the curator of it. Um, tell us about the show and like how you decided, like how you came to be doing the show. Uh, well, we came to be doing the show because Molly said, come on over here and do this. <laughs> 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 um, and the work in the show, because it's in Santa Monica and I've been painting um, references to playing cards, decks of cards, and Santa Monica back in the 30s had a horrible gambling boat accident and sort of all fit together in a funny conceptual way to be doing something about playing cards and the luck of the draw, and then that I like to draw, the word draw sort of fit into both of those stories. And then the um, installation of the work will be these two foot by 30 inch playing cards that will be arranged sort of randomly as if they were the way someone would deal them out. Did you, are these the ones that I saw in your studio a while back? Yes. Okay, yeah, because I came to your studio and you showed me all the paintings you did for the deck of cards. Yeah. And then you gifted me a deck of cards, which I haven't opened yet. Well, you know, yeah. I haven't made them, I haven't um, soiled them yet, but um, you <laughs> actually make decks of cards with these paintings, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, you, your, work, your work a lot of times, Stuart, has, um, has you know, you, you're always very hu humorous in your work um, or sly or whatever. There's always kinds of interesting references. What do you, what do you think, Molly? About um, like how do you how do you how did you invite how did you come to invite him into the space that you're curating? Well, I've I've been in business for many years, and I found that the people that attracted me were people that don't think like the herd, who are either again, uh, you know, doing something against what's in right now, or doing something that's totally naive ostensibly, and. Um, he did a show for me in the, at West LA College, and I just really liked him. I liked his uh, motivation, and I liked his energy. I think he should speak up a little more, but he loves to, you know, he's just like very quiet. <laughs> and I just always really liked him. And there was, I had a show that would be, you know, a lot of conflicts with all the egos and everything, and I, he just sort of kept everything very calm. Um, I, I went to this place, it was a real estate office, Valney, and I, um, uh, I went because my girlfriend, I went to Marlboro School with, uh, her daughter had a show there, and she was teaching at Harvard Westlake, and uh, it was the first time I've ever seen anybody that nobody knows about have a show, like, and sell out. I mean, it just amazed me. 
So uh, I was standing next to this kind of good looking guy and I said, now what do you do here? And he said, well, I own this place and I, I'd like to have you do some shows for me. So right away I thought of you. The first one was Scott and then you, and then the next one, the last one I think I'll, I'll do there and then maybe go to another place is um, uh, artists who paint. I mean, yeah. actors who paint. Because yeah. I, I think there's a real need for that and I think we get mixed up on what is art and what is showbiz. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, what, there's a long history of uh, not only painters being artists, but also being collectors. I mean, actors, I mean, people in Hollywood being artists and collectors. And um, real qu tell us some of the people that are in this show you were planning. Can you tell us now or do you want to wait? I'll, I'll read them to you if it's all right. <laughs> but you know that, that Mama Greech is sold for $97 million. And that uh, the Marilyn Monroe that Warhol did, the blonde, is it, million. Yeah. 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 So I mean, this is big business now. Oh, yeah. And I think that it's really important for people to get in on the on the bottom, and start you know inviting their friends for dinner, and then saying, oh, I just love something like that. Maybe we could trade a dinner for that. You know, start cheap. Don't don't get into that ninety seven million because most of us don't have that kind of money. And <laughs> yeah, in other words. <laughs> I mean, Start collect. Start collecting with what you have. Exactly. I mean, that's how that's how I've done it, and I yeah. still don't have ninety seven million, but I <laughs> I have a ton of great paintings that I love. Who's and, what's your favorite painting that you have? Oh God, and it's hard to. I just bought a, a very interesting Bob Brenneman the other day. Oh, good. Um, I really like my Peter Alexander. When I ha when I bought the Peter Alexander, co COVID had just started, and I was suddenly like kind of you know i needed to sell my sam francis which i a print not a not an original painting but a, a wonderful print so i put that up i sold it um through the bg gallery and i also had the man, peter alexander on the you know up for sale so peter alexander died and so two hours after he died ohm from the bg calls me and he goes Peter, Ale uh, you, we just sold the Peter Alexander. I said, no, no. Did you really give it to them? And have you taken the money yet? Oh. And he goes, no. And I said, I really hate to do this to you, but I have to hold on to it because I really miss Peter. Uh -huh. How much did he offer you? Oh, I was. It's a print. It's that. It's the locust print, the black, the black and white one with the bottom over the red. That's the green and, and red one. Up yeah, there. that's yeah. a beautiful one too. And I, I, you know, the I paid. It's worth about, I think it's worth about 2,500 bucks. I paid much, much less than that yeah. at an auction. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I, I can't afford to buy things that are expensive. I have to get a really good deal and, you know, that's how I build up the collection. But anyway, so tell us the names of the artists. Okay, Martin Mull. Awesome. Robert De Niro. Oh wow! His father, his father, that guy. His father <laughs> was, uh, you know, very involved with the de Kooning and Pollock, all oh, that group. Oh wow! And and he grew up in an art background, you know, and and uh, they were all shocked when he turned to acting. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Peter Jason, do you know him? Uh -uh. He's in everything. Uh, Bobby Newworth, you know Bobby? Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I've shown him. I like him a lot. He's, yeah. He, he, he's. Uh, he invited me to his house one day and, uh, you know, I thought, oh God, this is going to be a waste of time. He was on the Sunset Strip and then I, he couldn't get rid of me. I mean, it just <laughs> was fascinating. He has a really good brain. Val Kilmer, uh, Herb oh, Alpert. Nice. Herb nice. Alpert's cool. Val was in one of our movies a, long, a while ago. Va who? Val. Val. Val Kilmer, yeah, yeah, he was in a movie that I produced a while. Ted ago. Hartley, do you remember him? He oh, was yeah. A, he was a full-time uh, writer and actor and then he married Dina Merrill. And she left him when she died recently, RKO. Oh my God. That's quite Not a good studio. Not he has that 97 million he could buy. <laughs> yeah. John Lennon, Tony Hopkins, Steve Martin, and Jim Carrey. What a, what a lineup. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're going to do it at the same space that Stewart's show is at. Well, I, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure. Okay. That's well, a possibility. So, so Stewart, <laughs> are you showing, you're showing these cards in this show that's coming up. It's called Luck of the Draw. Yeah. And when does it open? It opens April 2nd. We were going to do it April 1st, but that's sort of, we didn't want to put any jinx on the whole yeah, thing. Good. Yeah, good. So yeah. And, and so are you just showing the, you showing the cards? Are you showing any of your wooden stand-up sculptures None or anything of, like that? Well, we're going to show some of the windows, the views from the uh, gambling ship. Oh, nice. The portholes looking out at the water. And we'll 
have uh, Joe Pock is going to play some uh, noise sound music at the opening, which is always. At what time of the day is the opening again? Six to nine. Yep, six, six to nine. nine. Okay, yeah. cool. And what's the address for people that are writing this down? And uh, here oh, I have seven, seven, 1712 Ocean Park, Park Boulevard. Okay. And what's the cross street? 17. 17. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, great. That's awesome. uh, just south of uh, the back end of uh, Santa Monica College. Yeah. Nice. That's a, that's a, they need a gallery. We need a gallery there. That's a good spot. Um, so. Um, and this guy's going to be very successful. I can just feel it. Oh, yeah. He's really, he's charming and honest simultaneously. That's that's yeah. very important in the art trade. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, should I write that down? <laughs> yeah. I think you've got yeah. some word, you've got some knowledge for us. Um, <laughs> uh, one of the things you 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 made clear earlier was um, don't sell yourself short and make 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 sure that you, without bragging, are positive about yourself. So, I you told me a story a few well, a, a few minutes ago that cracked me up and it has to do with how you met Willem de Kooning. Do you want to tell us that? Oh, I'd love to. <laughs> I, I was living out in East Hampton and I was kind of trying to make it in the art world. And um, I met John uh, McMahon, who was the uh, driver and assistant to uh, uh, Bill de Kooning. And I said, I'd really like to meet Bill de Kooning. And he said, well, so would everybody. <laughs> and he said, since Pollock died, he won't drive. So I have to drive him everywhere. So he said, if you want to meet him, he goes, to, we go to the post office every morning in East Hampton at 9.30. And uh, so stand in front of the post office and if he likes you, he'll send me over to meet you. He'll bring you to the truck. So I stood there three days. I mean, I, I, I didn't stay all day. I just stayed, you know, during that hour that he had given me. And then the truck didn't pull up. And then the third day, uh, John rushed out from the truck, which was parked out in the, you know, on the street and said, he's, he'd like to meet you now. So, oh, oh, and I went over to the to the truck and I met him and he loved showbiz. My dad was an executive at Paramount and my mother was, uh, her her, um, her uh, uncle was the governor and um, the mayor of, of uh, San Francisco for many years. Oh, so, wow, wow. And, and well, he, he got in some trouble. But he did some Sonny like Jim, Sonny Jim Rolf, his name oh, was. Oh, I know who that guy yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, he was my, my grandmother's brother. But anyway, uh, Bill loves stories like that. And so uh, he said, would you like to have lunch with me? Well, he, he couldn't get rid of me. I mean, he, he I, I just moved right in that day, you know? And uh, so uh, so then uh, John McMahon said, well, would you mind if uh, I have errands to do, would you mind driving him home? And I said, yeah, well, I could do that. So we had lunch at a, at a, 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 you know, a really nice place on the road, and then we went back to his house, and we started necking on the. Uh, <laughs> he was uh, he he lived right across from the um, the uh, where everybody's buried out there. So we necked on the uh, Pollock grave. <laughs> <laughs> what a story! I'm and sorry. then I went home, and I thought. I'll probably, you know, I'll, he'll be calling me. I was so great. He loved me so much. And then he didn't hear from him. Finally, I did call after about four or five days. And I said, I have to go back to L.A. I wanted to say goodbye. And he said, well, come over. So I, I really did literally move in. And then in the summers, he would get me a house nearby. Nice. Yeah. And that, that's, a, that's a wonderful story. And you have two, two, two de Kooning's that I'm looking at right there. Yeah, a couple more. On the wall, I'm sure. Um, so... Um, Bill de Kooning was uh, married to Elaine, and they were separated at that time. Oh. And uh, she lived, she she always saw what was best for him, and he put her in such a different league than she was in. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that when I came along, she was fine with that, you know? Yeah. He gave me a birthday, uh, pre oh, like you're having your birthday today. This is a little more glamorous than what I've given you here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he, he did have a birthday party for me at a restaurant uh, in East Hampton. And it was Ray Parker and his wife and uh, several people. I think there were four or five couples and it was really fun. And then oh, Elaine came in and uh, it was just, it was just odd because we all sort of were intertwined, you know, around him. Yeah. Well, I mean, what the, the, this was not, not so unusual at the time though. No, not at all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, what do you so in, in terms of your collecting 
you've been collecting for a while uh, and your your collection here in the house is incredible um, but you've also recently done um, a show in your garage <laughs> about an article in artillery that's pretty cool I mean you're, you're you've been talked about by people forever in in the art world and in so many ways um, uh, t tell us a little something what you think like what do you do you, I, I sometimes have a an idealistic view that good artists are good people because they're authentic with themselves that's not always true is it <laughs> well I, you know John Baldessari came I had had my gallery three I think three months on La Cienega and uh, he was uh, he, he was trying to get a gallery, and David, what's his name? And said David, I can't think of his name. Had sent him. What was it? it wasn't Kordinsky, was it? No, no, it was David, and he was married to the woman that had the show at LACMA of her bra size, going up and down. Anyway, so um, he, he came in with a little truckload of his paintings, and he asked me to look and. He, he looked like a nice guy, you know, and I looked and then I realized that I'd never seen art like that where he'd used words to express how he felt and those very unattractive words. I mean, they, they were not only unattractive, but there was nothing to back them. And and uh, so the one thing that we did use when we, I said, okay, you can have a show. And I didn't have anything lined up, so it was, he was moving practically right in. But there was a photograph that somebody had taken of him in, in National City and it was on a, a street that he lived in, and there was a palm tree coming yeah. out of his head because the, uh, the the photographer didn't know how to take pictures. <laughs> and so uh, it, he took this thing, and then he called it wrong, and yeah. we sent that out as the announcement. Well, the and all, you know, I never had a crowd like that. Robert Rowan and all those people started hanging out in the gallery, and particularly in him, you know, because he had so much to offer. Was that, didn't that become like a recurring theme in his work? Oh, totally. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah, that's like how to con with it. yeah, how to yeah. compose a photograph right, wrongly. With the wrongly. Palm, palm yeah. tree, yeah, yeah, palm trees sticking out of it. Yeah, he, yeah. He, was a, he was a good, I was one of his students for a while when I was at CalArts, and he was a good teacher. One of the things I liked about his teaching was he didn't expect us or want us to be, you know, cookie cutters of him. Oh, good. Which I didn't. Would, I never knew that. Yeah, be, which is that what I what I really admire about him because it's so easy if you're if some art students really just kind of don't know what to do, and they'll copy. Yeah, so, absolutely. Which is, I mean, how a lot of artists grow and learn, but yeah. still, being a like a, you know, a free thinker. Yeah. Well, yeah. Stuart, tell us a little bit about what, how you got started in art. Um, mm -hmm. Like how you set set. I, well, I bet I you started in, drawing it early, right? Oh, well, I started drawing when I was, yeah, like 12 years old or younger or something. I just always did it. And then in high school, I was on the yearbook staff and kind of encouraged to keep doing art because it was, you know, for the publication of your high school yearbook. Um, but it was always a tough decision because I wanted to do art that I wanted to do and not be pigeonholed or feel obligated to do repetition of previous art that sold or whatever and I started doing art just to amuse myself which sounds a little egocentric I guess but anyway that's what I was doing and continued to do that and uh, just uh, stuck with it. Where, where did you grow up? West LA. Okay well, and did my you? My dad have... worked for the a furniture store about five blocks from here that Molly happened to apparently uh, go to buy used for our patio furniture at down the street. Yeah, V, and now it's uh, it now it's somebody's yeah. uh, some collectors they use it now for their you know, oh, their gallery. Yeah, yeah. So it was just five blocks yeah, from yeah, here. Yeah, it's weird. It's funny. So I'd have to go pick my dad up from work occasionally. We might have met when I was 16 years old. Yeah. And where, did, you, did you study art in school or did you Yeah, I went to uh, Valley State before it came CSUN. And then it became CSUN and I graduated from there. Our teachers were... Uh, Bob Bassler. Bob Bassler and Peter Plagans and... That's a good Walter tip. Gabrielson. Wow, cool. Yeah, we, at the time, it was competition with UCLA for like... Uh, with the better teachers of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. At Southern the time, California. Yeah, it was, yeah. 
And um, what do you think, um, so your work often has, you know, elements of whimsy, elements of humor. You, you know, we asked, we, you did a, a, a really cool Venice cartoon for our book mm -hmm. when we did the um, Venice Now and Then show. Yeah. And uh, which Bob Sorry was in, and Peter Alexander was in, and Sam Francis was in. And it, was a, <laughs> it was a fun show. I was really proud to be able to show that kind of work because, um, you know, I've only, you know, whatever. So, um, but you are, um, but you've always done things that are based in drawing and based in sort of humor, humor style drawing, very, yeah. very sly and well, witty. I always felt like um, the most direct way to. To express yourself is putting a mark on something. It goes back, you know, for thousands of years that people wanted to be able to put a mark on a stone and, you know, show they were there. And so that's kind of like the most basic way to express yourself is a drawing, really. And some of your drawings are also unique and funny because they're just words. Like, for example, the drawing you showed me earlier, which was the one, oh. the, 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 no, we'll shoot out of the uh, yeah. What was it? It's the story of uh, it's you know in the book anyway. The, there's a shootout. Well, it's an old western story about a shootout in a town, and I kind of manipulated okay, it correct. to be a shoot out because there was an argument over uh, realism versus expressionism. So the two cowboys <laughs> like had to shoot it out. That's great. Yeah, <laughs> and so so um. Um, you have your book here called More Other Stuff. Um, it's uh, I've got a copy. Get your copy. If you guys are watching, I'm waving it to, in the air for everybody who's listening. Mm -hmm. It's a really cool book. It's got a whole history of your stuff. It's called More Other Stuff and Even More Other Stuff. Stuart, Stuart Rappaport. Um, so, Sung Hee, tell us a little bit about what made you decide to curate the show and how you came to... Um, how you came to... To uh, Get decide to do with this, bunch. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So I have been, I have known and been a part of uh, Beachy Gallery for about ten years. Back when um, Ulm had the space on La Brea, and then uh, a smaller space on Ocean Boulevard as well. Ocean Boulevard, Ocean, Ocean Ave. Ave, Ocean Ave. Sorry, yeah. uh, that he split with Hamilton Space. So I think right when I started was uh, the first year was. Stuart had a show with uh, the Getty Pacific Standard Time. Uh, do you guys remember that? Oh, yeah, it, it was like all, all throughout LA, there were shows in various mm -hmm. galleries and museums. Mm -hmm. And Stuart had a solo show at Bleicher Gallery on La Brea. Yeah. That, yeah. I'm saying that right, right? And, mm -hmm. then, and that was the cur critics, collectors, and curators? Um, well, it, was, it had the first wooden cut, but it was a combination of the cutouts of the kind of the gatekeepers of the art world. And then it also had people, the farm workers working their backs off, picking oranges and whatnot and some fruit trees. And so it was like the people that determine what's valuable, watching these people that are feeding us. And that was kind of the juxtaposition of what was going on in the show. Yeah, the cutouts, um, mm -hmm. you, you did one cutout of Molly Barnes, right? Yes, I did. And, <laughs> and, and a lot a lot of um, the cutouts are have people like Walter Hobbs and Peter Frank and- Jerry Saltz. Jerry Saltz, people like that. Big yeah. of the art world. Yeah, and I, I showed, I think I showed three of them when we did oh, that show over at the tag. Yes. They asked me to curate a jury a show there and, yeah. and I, I put, Three of those in that. I think we put really salts up with there, and uh, yeah, I put them in the. I put one in the window. Yeah, because to look out on Wilshire Boulevard, like if you do, you know, you should come, come in. in here. Yeah, well, because you know, artwork needs people to look at it, and yeah. if you're not getting any attention, I figured, well, I'll make people to look at my work. And, yeah, yeah, so yeah. And there's some, there's some super some some colorful figures in the art world. I worked with one guy. Who was just notorious? He's passed away now. His name is Willoughby Sharp. Oh yeah. And he started Avalanche. Oh, well, I know really well. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I helped run his gallery for a couple of years. Oh. And when I first met him, he was I at a party. That. Yeah. I was. He, we, I first met him. He was at a party in um, in um, New York, and Arlene Schloss had let me stay at her place, and I had this tiny little corner. And she said, "Tonight is your last night." And I said, "I don't have any more money, Arlene." 
but I don't know where I'm gonna stay. Well, she goes, well, go to this party in my in my place. Oh, so oh I, good. That's so I go great. to I go to the party, and there's Willoughby in a yeah. surf sucker suit with his hat, <laughs> and I look around, and there's people standing around listening to him. He's holding court, and I, said, <laughs> I need to get to know that guy. Yeah. So he said, uh, well, I get to know him, and I was desperate for a place to stay, but I didn't want him to know, so I was being as conscious as I could. And finally, at the end of the night, I said. Willoughby, I just gotta ask you something. I need a place to crash. He goes, you can crash on my gallery floor if you don't mind the rats. <laughs> and I said, okay, no problem. And so I stayed at the gallery floor and we got to know each other and he said, do you wanna help me run the gallery? And I had no money, I was broke, I just had my portfolio, I'd gone to New York with no license. This was in the like late 80s or whatever. So he, he made me buy a suit. He took me to this place on 96 in Stuyvesant <laughs> and, and to, a, to a Catholic thrift store run by yeah. an Arab guy. Yeah. And he took me to the basement where all the suits were, the fancy suits. And I walked up to the rack and I picked the one out. He goes, you just picked the most expensive suit on the rack. And I said, well, it looks good to me. And he goes, that's a $2,000 handmade suit. And I said, I can't afford that. He goes, $75. <laughs> and oh, so perfect. by that time I was done, I was dressed up like a gallerist. Mm, yeah. And I had a suit. And Will so Willoughby was a fantastic guy. Wow. You, when, did, when did you meet him? Oh, I've known him for, I knew him for years. Yeah. yeah, through the New York art scene. Yeah, notorious yeah. guy. Cool, yeah. Funny and funny. Was crazy. he involved in the correspondence art back in the late 70s? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And he, 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 he says stuff. he brought Joseph Boys over. Wow. I think he did. Yeah, yeah I think really? he did. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, so, um, so I don't know if I interrupted you when you were talking about how you met Stuart. Oh well, I mean that's that's when we first met, yeah. and then and then coming back now to present day and and the show that's coming up. Um, so I recently rejoined uh, BG last summer, um, and I've been doing curating and I've been running the after hours program, BG After Hours, which is. We bring, we're bringing in uh, music and book readings and book launches, uh, uh, panel discussions, Perfect. you know, cultural yes. and community focused uh, content. Um, but so I'm very actively involved with the gallery. And uh, when this opportunity came up, you know, um, Stuart had contacted Ohm, mm -hmm. and I was there when the conversation was happening, and Ohm asked me to you know check it out and see what, and, and see if I could help with this so uh, yeah and having known uh, about Stuart's work I jumped on it and so okay, now we're so like best buddies <laughs> I think I think what happened is hmm. our space ended in the middle of your conversation oh. C could I say something oh. I have one of your sculptures of me in the other room yes do you want me to bring it so in here? I think, oh, we'll I think, take photos. I think our Twitter, I think our twi Twitter space just ended. Really? Oh, no. In How the long middle was it? of it, in the middle of uh, well, it's twelve fifty eight. So we've been on an hour. Oh, Are you wow. serious? What? No, yeah. that's not possible. <laughs> oh yeah. Really? No, wait, no, we started at twelve thirty. Oh, okay, we've been on 20 minutes. I can turn <laughs> <laughs> no, I was like, wow. That sounds like what I was like, wow. I don't know how that happened. That's never happened to me before. Well, it was originally scheduled for 12. Maybe that's why. Did you schedule it? Did no, I, no, there's no. no scheduling on this. And oh, for okay. some reason, like I never have had this happen. It's a little embarrassing. But oh, don't be silly. Oh, yeah. 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 How many you know technology better than the rest of us. <laughs> Do we, had, we, had a, we had a good... <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna pause this. This that was part one. <laughs> we'll take a we'll take a little break.